In March of 2020, the entire world stopped. Many stayed home, but the heroes of the healthcare world never stopped. They continued to care for patients around the globe and right here in our community. Here at Silver Cross, our extraordinary frontline heroes stepped up to the challenge. They donned protective personal equipment, worked long hours, and cared for patients, our community, and each other in true Silver Cross fashion. They sat bedside with our loved ones when we couldn't. They kept us informed and they kept us safe. For the last 19 months, these incredible heroes have administered more than 91,000 COVID-19 tests, successfully treated nearly 3,000 patients with coronavirus, and given out more than 33,000 vaccinations. Many of them have shared their stories and educational videos about how the pandemic has affected them personally and in their daily work. Today, we honor our Silver Cross healthcare heroes for their dedication, determination, and leadership throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. When COVID-19 started to spread throughout the country, little was known on how to contain and care for those sick. There was a lot of fear, and so our main focus at Silver Cross was always to make sure that we were providing a safe environment as we could for our staff so they could be as effective as possible taking care of the patients. I remember getting called down to the emergency room, walking into the emergency room. Um, no lot of the staff, no lot of the doctors, and looking at each room and seeing an isolation sign and our little carts outside of almost every single room. And almost every single room was filled with a patient. It was like a war zone. It was like somebody had dropped something off and kept going. And when it hit the hospital, it was like unbelievable. And each day I came in, I prayed. Initially what I felt when they told us that our unit was going to become the COVID unit, it, uh, it struck me a little, you know, I was taken aback a little bit that we were going to have to do this, not knowing really what this disease was all about and what, was, what, what were we going to need to know? How are we going to be able to take care of these patients? Well, you know, we have the doctors, we have other nurses, we have the management, they're going to get us through this. And that's really what, how I felt. And I was right. Despite the challenges, our Silver Cross heroes came together even more, working as a team to help their colleagues through every shift. Silver Cross Hospital is still up because everyone was like on one accord. It was not this person doing something different, this person doing something di different. Everybody worked together as a team to make it more easy for everyone else. We had a few doctors that um, made cubicles for us, so what we did intubate um, place an artificial airway into a patient that um, we were containing um, that possible exposure to a, a cubicle, to a plastic cubicle. So we could still get in there, do our job with our hands um, and visualize everything, but we were keeping um, each other safer. You know, we've all been through a lot. So I think relying on each other and relying on your training or just Things are new, just asking questions, whether it's to each other and, and, and just trying to stay as far ahead as you can in a difficult situation. We, we were concerned we wouldn't have enough doctors to run our ventilators. And at one of the meetings, um, someone brought up, oh, maybe we should talk to the anesthesia group about if they'd be willing to help run ventilators. That's something they can do in the OR. And then someone else said, oh, they've already taken it upon themselves. They've come up with a schedule of who's going to come in when to, to do extra shifts and run ventilators for us. And you know, these are the things that people at Silver Cross do um, without being asked, just because they know that uh, we're all part of a team and that we can really do anything if, if we all do it together. So as a team, we all was there for each other. When somebody had a bad day, we try to comfort them. Then in March, it hit me. I lost a family member with COVID, a sister, 10 days in the hospital. Talked to her that Sunday. She was gone the next day. So when people say it's not real, it's real.
Even those who didn't interact with patients every day saw their roles changing and adapting. One thing remained consistent, prioritizing patient and staff safety. Well, with me working in nutrition services, it was a challenge for everyone because we had to like change things like the salad bar, the deli bar. People couldn't touch stuff. We had to hand it to them. We weren't letting visitors in the cafeteria at all. So it was a change for us. We really had to look at you know, our workflow and things that we were doing as pharmacists on the floors in person. It was a, a different for us where we had to take new approaches like calling patients on their phones to counsel them. I think one of the things I've learned um, over these last 18 months um, is uh, you know, how everybody who works in healthcare, everyone who works in a hospital um, during something like this is a critical healthcare worker. You know, we can't do any of the things, and I'm saying we as physicians um, trying to take care of patients, we can't do any of the things we do if it's not for everybody else who is here. Everybody is a critical person um, when it comes to um, the ultimate goal, which is taking care of patients, getting them better, and sending them home. In spite of all the challenges everyone faced, the community response was nothing short of remarkable. From food donations to thank you signs and car parades, all of it helped lift the spirits of our heroes every day. Well, when we were getting all of the meals and the parades and, and the cards, it was so, it was really wonderful. We felt like we weren't forgotten because we're just coming there every day and doing the best we can and not really realizing what does everybody else think about us and what we're doing. But for the community to do what they did, they didn't have to do it. But it was like, it showed love from the community. And it was, it was very nice. It was very nice what they did. It was great during um, during this whole time when we were trying to deal with taking care of patients and um, taking care of each other, making sure that we're safe during this whole time, that um, the community, the hospital came together and um, showed an outpouring of love to us. Um, we got sent boxes of little of cards from little kids so sweet telling us how much they cared about us and thank thanking us that meant the world then in december 2020 a glimmer of hope arrived in the form of the covid 19 vaccine initially approved to protect frontline workers. When its use was expanded to more and more populations over the next several months, our heroes were right there to administer it. Uh, it was definitely exciting in the sense of like, you know, finally something, you know, where you feel like, okay, this is concrete, this is something, uh, it's coming. And, and it was very exciting to look at that and say, okay, we finally have something that we could get to people, not only the patients, but the caregivers as well. My first thought was, if my sister would have took this vaccine, would have saved her life. But she didn't have that opportunity to get it at the time. The worst part of it was that we didn't know if there was an end in sight. And the vaccines really represented that for us. Um, it, finally, you know, so many people came to me and said, I finally have hope. And, and seeing what our staff had been through and how hard this has been on them, um, uh, emotionally, physically, worrying about their families, you know, just having that hope, it was the best feeling in the world. There's still a long road ahead. Our Silver Cross heroes continue to care for patients when they need us most. They're still on the front lines, showing up day after day, providing safe and effective care for all. And even though they're masked, you can see the smiles in their eyes and the kindness in their actions. You know, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. I see um, um, hope for the future. Hopefully, prayfully, this will all come under control. Will it still take some time? Yes. Are we still getting cases? Yes. Are people still very sick with this virus? Yes. But it is getting less and less, which is a good thing. And I think we're all gonna be better off because we had to go through this um, that we're going to be stronger and more united in the future. Thank you to all of our healthcare heroes. 
Thank you for continuing your fight against the pandemic. Thank you for caring for the people we love the most. Because of your dedication, incredible strength and resilience for our community and each other, the Silver Cross Hospital Board of Directors and Shoulder Guild proudly salute our healthcare heroes today and every day.